I'd like to formally welcome the Taoiseach and Tawnishta and convene the formal meeting of, of, this, of, of today. Today is an historic day. It's the day when the members of the Convention on the Constitution have assembled in this symbolically important place to start the task given to us by the Houses of the Eructus. We're charged with examining a number of the aspects of the Irish Constitution, the people's document. We have the privilege of influencing the fundamental text that reflects the values of Irish society and provides a framework for our laws. I'm honoured and humbled to be asked <clears throat> to do this job and I'll do it to the best of my ability. The composition of the, of the convention, two-thirds members, citizen members, one-third elected representative, is already an innovative approach. And what we, we, our work will be examined with great interest in many countries in the world. While we are predominantly a citizen-based assembly, <clears throat> it's appropriate that we will hear from the political leaders of our country today, from the government and opposition, and indeed from the representatives of, uh, we are delighted to have also with us here, representatives of four parties in Northern Ireland. <clears throat> As Justice Hogan said, the 1937 Constitution was a product of its time, but it has stood the test of time. But as again Dermot Kyo said, there is huge changes which have happened in the intervening decades. Much of this change has been positive. We've increased our living standards, our standards of education, our national self-confidence. Our membership of the European Union has been one of the most important decisions we took in these 75 years since that, with major consequences at political, economic, and cultural level. Our EU membership has arguably enabled Ireland to play a more significant role in international affairs. For a small nation, we have consistently shown a generosity of spirit in our foreign policy, from UN peacekeeping to our contributions in humanitarian and development matters. And that generosity of spirit has recently been recognised by Ireland's uh, election to the UN Human Rights Council. <clears throat> but it has not all been positive as Dermot remarked. The past two decades in particular, confidence in some of our key institutions of state and church has been undermined. <clears throat> the recession over the past few years has brought hardship to many people. There have been failures in accountability and lapses in ethical standards. Trust in the political system has diminished. And in some of our public discourse, there is a cynicism and a sense of alienation, which is unhealthy for our society and ultimately dangerous for our democracy. So the Constitution, as it starts its work, needs to take account of these, this complex reality that is Irish society at the moment. And if we are to have and retain a high level of public trust, we have to earn it by being very open and very transparent in the way we work. We know that citizen assemblies in other countries can work, and we know even here in, here in Ireland, two years ago, there was an initiative called We the Citizens, which gave a sense of how ordinary people have a, want better accountability from the, it, within public life. We, ha we have a huge strength in Ireland in having an active civil society. Over the last 11 years in concern, I've seen in many countries the costs of not having an active civil society. We have it here and we hope to listen carefully to the voices of that civil society as we do our work. I'd like the, the convention to explore innovative ways of listening and engaging with the wider public within Ireland and with our diaspora. Generations of Irish people abroad have made a massive contribution to this country and I would like that we find ways, formal and informal networks, of listening to these people today. I hope the Constitution can find innovative ways of connecting with young people. We need to seek out ways of engaging with young people 
so that they see what are the privileges and possibilities of citizenship while also learning of the responsibilities. We have to go about our work in a very open and transparent way. All the public sessions of the Convention will be live streamed. The Convention website, www.constitution.ie, has gone live today. And all Convention documents and submissions received will be open to the public on the website. I want to say a very special thank you to the Escher Group and on post who, ha who have supported the design of the website for free. The Convention will be supported by an advisory panel of constitutional and legal experts, and we will use these people uh, to help us in our work. Over the past record decades, uh, and Dermot Co referred to this, our record in Ireland of discussing possible constitutional change is not good. Our debates have been frequently bitter and adversarial. I hope we can do better in the future. I hope that both within our work in the Convention and in any subsequent public debate, we have those discussions in a sense of tolerance, respect for divergent opinions, and good manners. Most people, whether they be citizens, politicians, or experts, constitutional experts, believe that the 1937 Constitution has served this country and its people well. Dermot referred to some of the other reports that have been made, the 1967 report, the 1996 report, and the 10 reports of the All-Party Eructus Committee on the Constitution between 97 and 2006. He referred to Dr. Ken Whitaker, one of Ireland's <clears throat> finest ever public servants. I spoke to him yesterday. He wasn't, he's not able to be here today. He'll be 96 in one week's time, and he sends his best wishes to the Convention and its work. <clears throat> We will hope to draw on that work that has already been done by those other organisations or other committees. But it is also true to say, as Dermot acknowledged, that no matter how good quality those works, those reports have been, none of them have given rise to systematic or substantial constitutional change. And this time, I think there are a number of reasons to hope that our work will give rise to change. And there are three key reasons for this, in my view. The first is there appears to be broad political support for change. <clears throat> the government has made a clear commitment that it will examine the recommendations of the Convention within a specified time frame and decide if related referendums should be held. Opposition parties and the civil society groups that I've already spoken to have also said they support change. But of course, at the end of the day, it is the people who will decide the nature and scale of the constitutional change. The second reason for hope is the changed political situation on this island. After decades of conflict in Northern Ireland, violence has largely ceased. The Northern Ireland administration, led by First Minister Peter Robinson and Deputy First Minister Martin McGuinness, are working together on the normal business of government, of creating employment and improving services for the population. The political framework for this, of course, is the Good Friday Agreement and the St Andrews Agreement. These two agreements <clears throat> have contributed to a new stability on this island to improved relations between the Republic and Northern Ireland and between the Republic and Great Britain. In the motion establishing this convention, we have been asked to have appropriate regard to the Good Friday Agreement and the St Andrews Agreement. The hope of the vast majority of people on this island is that we can live our lives within a settled and secure peace and build a better future for our children. Much work is still needed within Northern Ireland on reconcili reconciliation 
and on healing the pain from the conflict. Practical working arrangements between the administrations on both parts of the island need continued attention. But this is the spirit against which I hope this convention will have appropriate regard to the two agreements and will build on the possibilities which develop from that. The third reason to dare to hope that our work will lead to change is more simple. It's time for change. It's not just that the current constitution has attained the venerable status of 75 years, or that in 10 years' time, to 1922, that will be the centenary of the establishment of the Irish state, free state. It's more that the combination of social, economic, and cultural change over the decades requires that we relook at the words in our founding document, the Constitution. And our experience in recent years of coping with economic recession and of dealing with the social scandals that have shocked this country require us to ask the most fundamental questions about our values, the way we govern ourselves, and our standards in public life, and that, that these be reflected in a renewed constitution. We have lived through interesting times. In April 19, 1998, the Good Friday Agreement was signed. Although it took a number of years <clears throat> to deliver on its potential, it will probably, probably be seen as an historic turning point in the history of this Republic, of Northern Ireland, and of this island. At some point, some people asked whether the finalization of the Good Friday Agreement reflected a line from one of Seamus Heaney's best-known poems, a time when hope and history rhyme. As we start our work in the convention, maybe Seamus Heaney's words are still appropriate. They are taken from his poem, The Cure at Troy, a translation of a classic Greek poem about an ancient war. History says don't hope on this side of the grave, but then, once in a lifetime, the longed for tidal wave of justice can rise up and hope and history rhyme. In this convention, we have a once in a lifetime opportunity to shape the future of this country. The shapers of the 1937 constitution did a good job. Now it is our time and our turn. Despite all our recent difficulties, this country has achieved a great deal. We must believe we can achieve a great deal more. We owe it <clears throat> to the current generation and our children's generation to have a constitution which reflects the values and the aspirations of the Irish people and to which they are prepared to vote allegiance. As convention members, we start our journey together today, 1st of December 2012 in Dublin Castle. It's a rare privilege to be offered the chance to make such a contribution to one's country. I look forward to working with each of you to maximize that contribution. Thank you very much.